Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Everyday Musician Podcast. I am your host, Eric Mugala. Joining me today, my guest is a vocalist and violist from Ecuador, Quito, Ecuador. Uh, this is Jason Egiguren uh, joining me from Quito, Ecuador. And in this week's episode, Jerson, finally nice to have you on this podcast. This is a long time coming, but this is going to be a particularly fun episode talking to you. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Uh, Jerson, for many people who may not know you, tell, tell us about yourself, where you come from, how music was introduced in your life. Well, so um, I'm from Quito, Ecuador. Uh, my mom is Colombian. That's an important detail. <laughs> and my, my dad is a musician. My grandma is also um, a musician. And then when I was a kid, I went to the conservatory I applied to study violin, but it didn't work out because uh, they didn't have any more instruments or teachers available. So I chose clarinet for a bit, then I went to saxophone, and then I went to piano, and I dropped all of them. <laughs> but during all this time, I, I was always singing. When I was 11, I went to participate in a Olympic choir competition in Germany representing my country. And when I was 16, I, I, I knew that I wanted to sing forever. Then when I was 18, I decided that I, I should uh, learn violin because it was something I always wanted. I always knew I wanted to study, but I didn't have the chance. So I, I went to violin and I started playing with no idea how to do it. But I don't know, it came a, a career <laughs> at the end. You know, it's funny because when we met in Boston, mm -hmm. you actually had a reputation of being a violinist and a violist. Yeah. People forgot that you actually went to Berkeley for As a singer. voice, <laughs> oh, to be a singer, to be a professional that's singer. And, yeah, that's right. and um, of course, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the violist and the violin part uh, mm -hmm. in just a moment, but I do want to focus on your singing ability. And you're quite a gifted singer. And every time I see you on Instagram, you're you're always collaborating with people and you're always you know, doing your best to kind of bring joy into people's lives. Talk about um, where you get that inspiration from. Well, I don't know. I think coming from Latin America, you get to to see a lot of uh, different situations from people. And like it, it gets me very like sensible to all of these things. Um, so I really want to make an impact or be somehow a help for everyone I can meet. Uh, so I can get to know them and get to understand their own story. It really makes me happy to to learn about everyone's story. Uh, I think music is such a wonderful way to connect and to speak the same language. Because I love meeting people from all over the world, but sometimes, like like my English, you can hear it. Sometimes it's very limited, but I think through music we all connect very well. I think your English is quite good. So <laughs> don't don't beat yourself up for your English is very very nice. So. Great. So your singing is your ability to connect with people. Mm -hmm. Is is there a specific genre that you that you sing or are you open to singing many genres? Well, I'm very open to sing everything, but I think my my strongest uh, genres are Latin American music, of course, because I'm from here. I grew up listening to that. Um, I love jazz. I did jazz uh, at school. And then I love world music, whatever is traditional music. I really get very inspired to learn and, and to practice and understand how it works and like how people express their feelings through different melismas and stuff. So, yeah. Excellent. Thanks for sharing mm -hmm. that, Jerston. So you mentioned that your father is a musician. Did father, um, did your dad get you into music or was it more so that you were around your dad all the time and this is something that you wanted to try doing? I think my dad is very important in my music career because since I was a baby, he always tells me he was playing every music he could, like very good music. He was always playing jazz and classical music and Latin American music, whatever he thought it was like very good quality music for my ear to get used to like listening good music. Uh, and then when I was six years old, he, he, he took me to the conservatory. So I think, yeah, it's a very big influence. And how old were you when you attended the conservatory in Ecuador? I was six years old, and then I stayed there till I was 13. Then I dropped it. <laughs> and then you dropped it because yeah. you were trying different instruments and didn't. 
didn't know what instrument you wanted to choose. No. So let's dive in. Well, no? it, that, that's that's a reason, but also because the conservatory here is not that inspiring. Like people are not well paid and they're not very happy doing their job. So it, it wasn't inspiring. It wasn't for me a joy to study music at this place. It was more like, oh, I don't want to go there anymore. Like I'm really tired. It's not nice. So that's why I dropped it. I see. I understand. Uh, thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> uh, do you do any collaboration with your dad? I know that I've seen a few videos on Instagram, but it seems like you have a very, very awesome connection with your dad when it comes to music. You always collaborate with your dad. Talk about the process when you're recording some new music or recording a video. Is it really difficult working with your parents in the same profession? Okay. What's that like? Well, sometimes it's very easy because... Um... I always say, like, the favorite p uh, person to play with is my dad, especially when he's accompanying me. He plays guitar. Uh, he plays a lot of instruments, but when we are playing as a duet, he plays guitar and I sing. It's very nice because it's very hard to find someone that can play and follow the singer. Like, you know, following the, the timing, the dynamics and the intention, and he understands where, where I'm trying to go. So that's very nice from him. Um, sometimes is is you know, like... Every family relationship, you get to to get stressed out at rehearsals or something like, ah, oh, don't do this and stuff because you're more confident to treat that person like that. But but at the end, we're always enjoying so much doing music. So it's good. Wonderful. So, you know, this question just kind of popped up into my head, but mm -hmm. you said you left the conservatory at 13 years old, yeah. you know, trying to go on the previous topics. So you said you left the conservatory in Ecuador because it wasn't really a place where you can you know, really create good right. music. It wasn't inspiring for you. So what what were you doing between the age of 13 and 18? Did you attend another school? Were you uh, learning music at home, home with your family, with your dad? Describe that time period in your life. Yeah, so when I was uh, at the conservatory, while well, I was studying solfege and like um, clarinet, saxophone and piano, I learned how to side read, like to read music. So um, when I was 13, I, uh, we had a piano at home and I started putting a lot of music on it and just trying to say read a lot of pieces. Uh, and I got really good at piano, classical piano. I started playing all day. I really loved it. So I was practicing the whole day. When I was at, at high school, when I had a break, I went to the piano and practiced. When I was at home, I was practicing piano till it was like 3 a.m. till my dad was like, please stop. <laughs> and also I was always singing at the conservatory. And singing was such a, a a wonderful thing for me to do. One day, my dad was listening to me, and he said, "You have quite a um, such a sound like a Brazilian tone. You should try to sing some Brazilian songs." And he showed me uh, some artists and music, and I got so in love. I I started singing a lot of Brazilian songs. He was accompanying me, and that's how everything started. Like during those years, since I was thirteen till forever. I was just singing and singing. My dad introduced me to so many important musicians here in Ecuador. They wanted to collaborate with me. We started doing like big uh, shows around this country. And yeah, that's how it went from, from that point. Jerson, thanks so much for sharing all of that. And, you know, you have a very interesting life story. For, mm -hmm. for people who know Jerson, you are a very loving, kind person. You know, I don't think I've never seen you in a bad mood ever, <laughs> you know, so I, I you know, and I'm, um, you have uh, such joy when it comes to music and it's, it's obvious when you're singing in videos and it's obvious that you genuinely want to bring music into people's lives. And it's, it's obvious that you get that from your family and from the people around you. And, uh, talk about where you get that joy from, because I feel like it's not easy to obtain for many for many people, but for for someone like you, it just becomes natural, mm. or it is natural. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think um, everything is a process. I, I I feel like so many people have it so natural, and so many people work on it. I I feel like I'm in the middle. Like it's not really that natural, but it's also not that hard for me to connect with music. So I think it's been a process of of trying to develop that feeling I came with about music and just trying to get better and yeah I don't know I think I think music and especially in Latin America inspired me to to think as music as a such a powerful 
tool to to bring a message or to bring love or to to change something politically or or whatever you know it's such a powerful way to to do stuff i want to transition into the time where you represented your country in the olympics singing for your country mm -hmm. tell us about how you got the call to be able to do something like this and the entire experience from beginning to end well that was really amazing i think it's one of the most important things that happened in my music career especially because it, it really brought me to this side as music as as my life career um i was called by a, a very small choir they wanted me to be part of it and then they told me this is uh, for the olympic uh, choir competition we, we're going to represent ecuador uh, all the countries around the world go to these and it's amazing so um i was just 11 my parents were like oh what is this like we don't know because i had to go alone just with the choir so they were a bit, a bit scared of course because they were not sure about this it was the first time we heard about something like this ever um but i'm glad they took the risk so i went um we went to spain france and germany and the competition was was in bremen and I just remember seeing all these choirs from all over the world singing in their own languages, uh, having their their traditional customs and and uh, the traditional dances, and I was just like, oh my god, like this is so beautiful. And I was the soloist of the choir, so that was also a very wonderful experience to hear my voice in all these theaters and churches and everything. And and I I think I got very inspired from this experience. What were some of the cities that you visited in, in these three countries, in Spain and in Germany? Uh, we went to Barcelona in, in Spain. Um, in France, we went to Paris. And then uh, in Germany, we went to just Bremen. What a joy to be able to share your music around the world. And I know for someone like you who is interested in world music, this is mm -hmm. obviously the perfect scenario for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jerson, I'd like to transition into into your Boston days, because that's where we met. We met in Boston through, you know, through a couple of friends, actually our good friend, Bengi Su, who is, uh -huh. uh, who might be listening onto the podcast. Shout out to Bengi Su. Oh, and uh, Bengi. she's a lovely, <laughs> lovely Turkish violinist who we know very well. And yeah. talk about your, um, your journey into the Berkeley College of Music and, you know, how you got there and what, and your experience there. Mm -hmm. So I, I remember, see, I don't know since when, but I always had Berkeley College of Music in my mind as like something that I really wanted for my life. It was it was a, a crazy process because uh, the economy in Ecuador is so different from the United States. And even in the United States, I think schools like Berkeley are very hard to to get in, to reach or to, to, to pay, you know. So I graduated from high school and I, I was like, one day I'm going to go to Berkeley. I actually auditioned it to the juniors program, but it was so expensive. I got like very good scholarship. Still, it was not possible for me to pay. So um, after high school, I went to one university. They were helping me economically, but it was it was not what I was looking for. Then I prepared myself to audition for this uh, university in Ecuador that has the Berkeley Bean program. It's a network. Um, I got in with very good scholarship and then when I was there I was working for my audition to Berkeley uh, and I did my first audition to Berkeley and I got accepted that was crazy for me because I didn't I, I, I couldn't believe it I was making some numbers and I immediately understood that it was impossible for me to attend it so I was like okay my dream is just bye forever because like this is impossible then next year I auditioned again because the chair, the part, the the chair um, head of of uh, the Berkeley he, he thing here was like, you got audition because Berkeley is gonna be perfect for you. And I said, well, I already got in. Like, what can I do? I don't have the money to go. So I auditioned last minute, and then I got a scholarship, and uh, I basically paid zero dollars for Berkeley. <laughs> so that was crazy. I I I I am forever thankful. Wonderful. I, and, and of course, you know, Berkeley, Berkeley College of Music, if you're listening, please sponsor the podcast. I'd really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you made it. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But, um, <laughs> but I'm only half kidding. But so let's talk about your experience at Berkeley. So you got 
this amazing scholarship at Berkeley and we met in Boston through, I think either, I think it was either a recording session or through friends or, um, I can't, I can't remember exactly how we met, but I think, um, but yeah, oh, take, take a moment to, you remember? Oh, okay. Can you, can you just describe that moment? <laughs> I think it was at the party, you know, we were dancing or something like this. It was at that party, wasn't it? It was at a party yeah. that I met. Yeah, yeah. it was, a, a, I, I can't remember it was, I can't remember if it was like a Halloween party or something, but I remember. I think it was our that, uh, our friend's birthday. It was your yes, it was our yeah. friend's birthday, and that's how we met. Uh-huh. And that was, uh, and then since then, it was you are you are a larger than life personality, and then we became friends right away. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> and that was fun, and uh, I'm forever grateful for mm. this friendship and for Me us too. to continue to connect. For sure. So, yeah, let's let's take a moment to talk about your experience during Berkeley. And how that experience in college kind of helps you shape your shape yourself as a musician today. Right. Yeah. For me, Berkeley was one of the most wonderful things that happened ever because I got to find really my world. You know, like when you don't really connect in the place you are. Like I love Ecuador, but I never really get to connect here because of culture and so many different things. It was crazy at the beginning because I didn't know English, so it was very hard for me to to get to understand a new a new country, a new different language, uh, like understand prices, how the 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 bus works, and the transportation, everything. You know, just like basic life necessities exactly. that you need to do every day. Exactly, it's crazy because your life just changes completely. Um, but Berkeley was wonderful. I got to find all the music styles I wanted to understand. And especially I learned everything from my friends, from the daily life, like how they cook, how they study, how they, how they believe in whatever they believe uh, in God or not. Like all these things really made me to, to see not just music, but my whole life as a, in a different way. And, uh, yeah, it was such a wonderful experience. I think connecting with people from all over the world changes your life and makes you a very open-minded person to understand more, I guess. You mentioned people and you mentioned uh, culture and food and all those things. Can you talk uh, for a moment about the importance of all of those things in influencing music in general? Like how do you, like in, in Latin American culture and culture in general, can you share your thoughts on um, like the different types of arts right like the culinary arts and food and uh mm-hmm. visual arts like how does how did how does that play a role in how you make music and how you sing music i think all those uh, forms of expression are, are a very big way to represent how life works in where in your country so i think music is like the most powerful way to express these things it carries so much history and so many things on it um, that yeah you get to understand so much from a culture just by listening how they sing and how they express so deeply or so dramatically like it 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 tells so many things about how how your life work not just your life but your your country and yeah i think it's very magical <laughs> and what you said was really really nice it's uh you know music is of course a form of expression just like the visual art just like culinary arts Mm -hmm. so i think they all they all kind of um intertwine in in one way shape or form Mm -hmm. definitely jerson you have an amazing social media presence and you know you and i follow each other on Mm -hmm. you know facebook instagram and all the things and i you know due to the recent covid19 crisis that we're all dealing with right now you know, musicians have taken a huge hit because right now the many, many musicians these days are freelancers. They are gig economy workers and right. they're pretty much out of a job right now because we don't know how long this virus is going to mm-hmm. spread and we don't know how long it's going to take for people to recover, to go to concerts, for us to continue sharing our art. And right. before we get into the amazing facebook post that you made i just want you to briefly talk about your experience in ecuador what's it like right now during the COVID 19 crisis Um, explain what you're doing and how you're living your life right now as we speak well in general in ecuador it's very very difficult to live from art 
so yeah, <laughs> the daily life is very hard already, and with this makes even harder. I'm thankful I'm working at this uh, university that has the Berkeley Network, so all the classes we are teaching through online, like uh, online software. So that's that's uh, very helpful. In general, by by performances and recordings and stuff, you don't live here because we don't have venues. People don't really go to anything. We have like very big economical crisis, so it it makes very hard. But for now, I think supporting each other, sharing our social media, that it's so important nowadays. It's a way to help us. And at the end of the day, I know economically it's very hard for us, but I feel very happy that we can bring happiness to people because, you know, so many people are going through this, not only artists, like there's people that have normal jobs. They, they not saying that music is not normal, but uh, oh, you know course, what I mean? Right. <laughs> yes, of course. Right. There are, there are definitely a lot of gig workers out there who are suffering just as much as musicians are. So it's not just musicians who are, you know, taking a hit, who are taking right. a hit. It's actually a lot more um, than we think. Yes, exactly. But I think somehow, I always say, as an as artist, we don't only live from from money. <laughs> like sounds and art makes us so happy. Our our heart gets so filled with this. So if we can make a little bit of money, like everyone else, just to stay healthy and eat every day, I think it's enough. I think it's more important for us to share art and bring music. And I want to be clear that you know artists never do art for money right they do it yep. to to do the things that we discussed earlier is a form of our self mm-hmm. is a f- form of self-expression it's to help kind of heal the world and f- if medicine is not enough but music is a is an amazing medicine that i think we could all use and need right now right and and i could have said it better myself jerson mm-hmm. so i do want to transition again to the to the facebook post that you that you posted, this is maybe perhaps two weeks ago, that has gone viral, has gone <laughs> yeah. viral like the COVID-19. It's been um, a very interesting thing to see how this post has kind of evolved. So can you uh, briefly talk about what your idea was and how it's gained so much traction in your in your network? So I think uh, I'm. I I've been always doing this, uh, trying to promote each other's videos and work art. Um, since I was at Berkeley, I remember always like making groups or hashtags for Instagram to promote your music fam. I called it once. So we get to share, and because we are all from all over the world, like we are a group of friends or. Or even just musicians, we all connect somehow, and we are all from all from all over the world. And people from all over the world are gonna see your stuff. So I think it's such a good idea to start promoting between us because we all understand how how complicated it is to to get seen, you know. So yeah, I'm I'm very glad people are collaborating. I see people from all over the world commenting and sharing their YouTube channels and everyone following each other. I actually think everyone got at least 200 followers more than what they had. <laughs> and that helps. That helps to move your your videos to get seen and maybe it's help you get famous and you get paid. <laughs> Right, and but most importantly, I this is for every musician who's able to look into the bigger picture and how to get paid as a 21st century musician. Because I think this is a very, very crucial moment in our history. Where you know, I mean, you know, for me, I'm a classical musician, and I think classical mm-hmm. musicians are slowly starting to get the hang of this in terms of sharing their YouTube videos and right. you know promoting it and becoming like YouTube classical musicians like two set violin is a clear example of that. You know, they have right over you know one million subscribers on YouTube and they're super successful in that sense. But specifically what you said in this post is that if you know YouTube, you know, Google owns YouTube and YouTube monetizes videos to accounts that have certain amount of engagement which when what and for people who don't know what monetization means it's when you know you add like a source of income or a a way to earn money through something so if you monetize a youtube channel there there are many different ways of how to earn money Mm -hmm. through a youtube channel and one of them is advertisement so for google they they have a set of guidelines youtube has a set of guidelines that if you have a thousand subscribers Mm-hmm. And you have four thousand hours of 
video, like 4,000 hours of watch time Mm -hmm. on your channel, then you are considered to be monetized, right? And it doesn't happen overnight, you know, granted, but this is definitely a direction that I think musicians who are listening to this podcast can get themselves on board. So, and that's why this YouTube post has been so successful. It's because this is one way, another way for musicians to kind of earn an income in addition to live performances. Mm -hmm. So can you just talk about your um your idea behind the post like what inspired you to do this well uh as i as i told you uh sharing is always something i really like um i i saw so many different ways to to start sharing stuff and uh i think it was such a good idea people are sharing it all over (laughs) yeah and not to mention it has over a thousand comments (laughs) thousand comments you know that's that's unbelievable you know people are sharing and they're doing the same ideas they're they're pretty much doing the same idea and Mm -hmm. i think it's brilliant for for anyone who wants to be a self-made indie right indie musician so Mm -hmm. jerson this has been such a pleasure to catch Mm -hmm. up and to talk to you about everything you know COVID 19 related and talking about your your personal journey through music how can people get a hold of you and how can people reach out to you if um, they're interested in learning more about your music Oh, so I have an Instagram account. I have a YouTube channel. You can find me as Jerson, uh, G-E-R-S-O-N. No Jackson, no Jason. <laughs> Jerson. Not Michael Jackson. No, 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 no. Although, although I will mention, I will mention that you do have really good hair. Oh. You know, <laughs> you have great hair. And I think for someone, uh, you do have great hair, like it, but it's nice and long. People who, you, who don't know Jerson like has long hair and uh, maybe you could provide a hair, a hair tip for anyone who's interested. I know. I know it's crazy. You know, like I think I always think I'm, I'm an artist. I'm not like very deep in music because I do so many stuff. Like I love, I love visual arts. I love to to dress like in a different way or nice or whatever. So I think my Instagram account has like so many different things like hair and and outfits and music and string collaboration and, and stuff. I think trying to do everything will will get me successful one day. <laughs> Yeah, let's hope. Yeah, maybe maybe finally Head and Shoulders will be able to sponsor you. Exactly. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, you finally we'll be able to get a um we'll be able to get a commercial for <laughs> right. for them or something. Hopefully one day. And yeah. um I hope to I hope they credit this podcast in Definitely. order for you to get the <laughs> to get that sponsorship. Definitely. But, we um, we all get help. Of course, yeah. And for Anyone, again, who's interested in learning more about Jerson, Jerson is on social media. I'll provide links in the podcast notes so that way you'll be able to just kind of click on it and go straight to Jerson's profile and you'll get to learn more about him. So Jerson, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Put me on the spot. But <laughs> put you on the spot? Okay. Would you be able to sing like a, a small little excerpt as something that you've been working on to kind of get us out of the podcast episode? Oh, uh, to sing. Um... Yeah, I will sing something in Spanish. Uh, Please do. So this is Jerson Eguiguren. Oh my gosh, I got I butchered that. Oh. <laughs> Eguiguren. You know, it's Eguiguren. not easy. Like in my country, no one can, well, no one can spell it or say it. And actually, in the United States, people are way better. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's it's very hard in every country I go. <laughs> my name, I meant last name. <laughs> so this is Jerson Eguiguren singing a Spanish song. Es la historia de un amor como no hay otra igual Que me hizo comprender todo el bien y todo el mal Que le dio luz a mi vida y apagándola después Ay, qué historia tan oscura Sin tu amor yo viviré. Yay. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Oh. Yay. Woohoo. Okay. So this is Jason Eggiguren from Quito, Ecuador. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Jason, for coming on to the podcast. And please Thank follow you. Jason uh, for more um, social media posts mm-hmm. and news reg- regarding Jason's career. Again, thanks again, Jason. 
Thank you, Eric. I love you so much. I think what you do is wonderful, and I really want to see you soon. Yes. Well, let's let's do a collaboration in uh, Quito one day. Hopefully, oh, uh, once this virus hap- once this virus goes away, we'll do something together. Yes, for sure. <laughs>